Thank you so much for listening to a new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is Halloween and horror movies. Happy Halloween. All right, hello everyone. This is Tony the Movie Guy and Miss Money Any here. All right, so Miss Money Any is back. It's it's back. It's officially back. Because we can't think of anything else, <laughs> we can't right? Think of anything else. <laughs> anyway, okay. I like Miss Money Any. So, I like it too. Uh, you know, it says there's money in my life. You know what we could do? Yes. Uh, we can survey our listeners. We could. Okay, so our listeners of Tony the Movie Guy, um, my lovely assistant Yenny, needs a nickname. So I just kind of called her Miss Money Any as a play on Miss uh, Money Penny from James Bond. Uh, but if you guys have an idea, um, message be, us, be, email us. Be kind here, people. Yeah, yeah, nothing mean, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you know, um, like what would they call you that be mean? I don't know. <laughs> you want to give them some ideas? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Anyway, so but that would be cool. Let's ask our listeners. Let's so, do it, guys. Yeah, email us um, if you have any ideas for a, a, a an alternate name for a miss money any but anyway uh, that, that, let's move <laughs> forward on this all right so this is a special uh, episode for uh, halloween Ooh. wow <laughs> we did that in sync Jinx. that was good we we're about to high five each other but that'd probably mess up the sound our so. producer would get very mad <laughs> danny would kill us yeah anyway yeah so uh halloween is uh, on the 31st uh, which is in a week. So uh, this is going to be a special uh, Halloween episode and we're going to kind of cover horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, now, look, this is a disclaimer. I'm not a fan of horror movies. Um, I, I made a list um, and there are, there are films that I love that just happen to be in like the horror genre. Right. So uh, I'm going, going to contribute uh, for sure my films of uh, favorite kind of horror movies. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of flip this a little bit and I'm going to give Yenny, Miss Money Yenny, the lead <laughs> on this one because she's a huge horror fan, right? That is very true. She loves the horror I, genre. I love Thrillers and horrors are probably my favorite genre altogether. It's kind of spooky. Yes. Your husband, David, should be concerned. <laughs> yes, he should. He should <laughs> and be very concerned. We're literally sitting here on a table um, and she's got a severed hand as a prop on the desk. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worried. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm gonna give, I'm gonna kind of give the floor to you. Okay. Um, and uh, what I was thinking is, why don't you go through uh, yours, mm-hmm. we'll discuss and debate, and then at the end, I'll add any of mine that maybe you didn't cover. Does that sound good? Perfect. Okay, cool. Oh, and another thing is, um, you know, since it's kind of Halloween time, um, A, this list is going to be helpful for people for, uh, you know, movie nights, yeah, for horror movie absolutely. nights. That's what um, I'm thinking with. Absolutely. Yeah. And then also there's two films I think I'll give a plug for um, that everyone should go see in the theater, which is obviously It, which was a huge yeah. sensation. It's a great horror film. And then... Um, Happy Death Day is a film I actually really want to watch. It looks great to you me. You and my husband both. I think it looks silly. Well, it just, it looked, well, A, you hate Groundhog Day. And it That's just right. looks, it just looks like a horror spin on Groundhog Day. <laughs> That's what it looks like. You'd it actually like looks it. really good to me. See, that's the type of film, like, it doesn't look like your normal slasher, just True. pointless torture porn movie that's really what i hate i hate the whole torture porn kind of just Mm. sensibility or i don't really get the idea or understand the appeal of paying money to like get the shit scared out of me you know what i mean i love it that's why you're taking the lead that's why i continued to go to universal halloween horror nights and tony did not after going once yeah so here's one funny anecdote before we start um i think i was with you a couple years ago we 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 did like the the horror maze remember through the cornfield the cornfield that was brilliant me and this other guy literally had (laughs) two girls in front of us as a shield (laughs) that's how bad we were we just like threw them in front of everything as all these crazy people came out like attacking us that, it was so that funny. cornfield was spooky it was, it's a real yeah. cornfield that's actors that jump out at you it's pitch black yeah i ended up running 
out of the cornfield, falling over the corn and tumbling out of we the cornfield. We all did, yeah. Like four of us all just kind of like potatoed all over it each was other. Amazing. Anyway, it was pretty crazy. Okay, good. Okay. So look, yeah. So uh, Halloween's coming up, and uh, Miss Money Any, you have the floor. We're gonna go through um, basically our favorite or you know uh, yeah. horror movies that we recommend. Okay, definitely. This all is right. my recommended list, and I'm gonna start with some very obvious ones, some classics, some um, very famous horror movies that I've actually, when I've talked to people, admit, oh, I haven't seen that. I really actually want to see that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the ones I have and haven't seen. Because okay, again, good. as I said, I mean, I don't know, maybe this will reveal that I'm more of a horror guy than I think. But I think you're going to be surprised. I, I do. think I haven't seen most horror films, but go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. First, number one, and one of my favorites, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Okay, good. So that's Obvious. a classic film. I've seen classic it sure. film. It is it is uh, listed on a million lists as one of the top or second horror, horror movies of all time. It's actually listed as yeah. the top horror film of all time. And Correct. it's got the famous line, here's Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and some um, some fun facts about that, actually, that I dug up. Did you know that Jack Nicholson was a firefighter before? No, I didn't. Okay, so he was a firefighter, and apparently on the filming of the movie, they had a prop door for that scene with uh, when he's chopping down the door. With the trying, axe. With the axe, trying to get at his wife and son. And it was a prop door, and he broke it too easily. So they oh, wow. actually put in a big, thick, like, oak door so that he oh, wouldn't that. chop it too easily. Um, something else I read, which was really spooky. This you might know. Did you know it's actually based on an actual hotel? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, Stanley it's a kind Hotel. Of true type yeah. event. Yeah. Like, uh, basically, the book was written based on the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, where there are many like hauntings. You no, know, it's Stephen King, right? Yes, yeah. correct. So Stephen King's book, not and the Kubrick. Correct. Stanley Kubrick directed it. Yeah, correct. Directed the movie, but the Stephen King book was based off that hotel. Right. Correct. And then uh, actually, there's been like you know the sh- there's a show called like Ghostbusters or Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunters. Ghost right. Hunters um, has done stuff there. There's like all oh, these they've done episodes they've about done, it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like it's actually that's it's it's kind of spooky. So I found that pretty fascinating. Yeah. Well, The Shining is a good movie. I I think it's a little outdated personally mm. and the th- funny thing is i don't think it's like scary it's spooky very and jack spooky. nicholson is phenomenal on yeah it. you know what i mean um and you know another fun fact actually that i happen to know is yeah. stephen king doesn't like the movie he at doesn't all. know i yeah, heard he that. hates the movie yeah, he didn't um, like it but no it's regarded as like the most classic horror movie of all time and, and i'll give you that i mean it's uh, it's phenomenal acting it's eerie it's spooky it's red sp- rum red <laughs> rum red rum but to me and i'll give you something uh, to me what defines a really good horror movie mm. are several things because obviously you have like slashes ghostly films uh the insanity scary films you right. have alien type movies you have True, there's a lot lots of different sub genres correct yeah. and to me it's just the the perfect epitome of just a really brilliantly done eerie spooky film yeah because of the hauntings and everything yeah. so that's the shining whoever has not seen it i first watched it in daylight to make sure i didn't get the crap <laughs> like scared out of me so i watched it in the middle of the day and then i watched it again at night and that was nice and spooky yeah it's on my list and it's definitely as i would say it's a classic there we go so that's the shining next uh to follow on from that rosemary's baby so that's roman roman polanski uh 1968 um i watched it last year for the first time it's mia farrow yes um i'm not a big fan i've seen it and again it's spooky it's spooky but i'm not a big fan i found it very slow and boring i actually really enjoyed it that was the funny thing i was like when i first started it i was like um and then as it progressed i was like this is actually very interesting of a concept right. i mean it's considered a classic as well in yeah. the horror genre it exactly is. so I, I definitely recommend it um it's not one of the more faster paced you're right. correct like totally right about that but it, i found it again a very good of the older classic okay good horror yeah, i've seen i've seen it i didn't put it on the list because i'm not a fan but um yeah, yeah it, so i definitely liked it and then obviously uh Hitchcock's Psycho, which yes, of course, <laughs> I watched on your on recommendation. Yeah. He he berated me for not having seen it. I had only seen the new Vince Vaughn one, which is yeah, awful. Come on, <laughs> I know, <laughs> so terrible. Psycho is a total classic. It's a great film and it's a great horror. Um, yeah. I mean, it's got the famous theme song. <laughs> that's not a theme song. I did that's it right this time. Prop. Yeah, but that's the. <laughs> Yeah. I did it totally wrong last time, so I've always wanted to correct that since <laughs> that, that, that episode. That was very good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was brilliant. And it's 
definitely an you know it's a it's a black and white hitchcock film but i was riveted the whole time it was brilliant i loved it and you know they, what they used um since it was black and white for blood wasn't it jam or something no, corn syrup corn syrup yeah that's right <laughs> um so yeah so that was the next one on the list and then definitely counts at the original Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween. The okay, first yeah, with Jamie film. Lee Curtis. Yeah, so that was actually Jamie Lee Curtis's breakout role that made Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. And obviously the music is a big thing on that one because that tune has gone on to haunt. That's John Carpenter. Yeah, and correct. Ha- okay, so Halloween is Mike Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Friday the 13th is Jason Voorhees. Jason, Borges. correct. Okay, I- I've seen the Halloween movies and they're pretty good. Uh, they're so cheesy now, though. That's what I found. Like, I'm, yeah. Oh, no, it was another one I watched with you. It was uh, another one, which we'll talk about later, I'm yeah. sure. But I watched Halloween, the original, I think a couple years ago, and it was almost funny to me. See, it, I just watched it at an outdoor movie like a couple of weeks ago you still to found see. It scary? I still found it jumpy. There really? were like five legitimate scenes where I jumped out of my pants. Oh, Serena wow. was <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> well, but, see, and, someone was laughing. And not just me like this was there were hundreds of people at this outdoor film and we were all we were all jumpy yeah it's a total classic horror film of course and uh i actually have some fun facts about that one too um (laughs) originally halloween um was actually going to be named the babysitter murders because it's actually she's a babysitter in that film who um jimmy Jimmy curtis Curtis, right And um, the producer then, obviously, it was changed by the producer and the director along the way, and it became Halloween. Okay. Um, Also, it's not actually known, but um, Mike Myers was played by three different people in that film. Oh, really? There were three different actors behind the mask. Any noted actors or not really? No, one of them was actually just a buddy of John Carpenter's. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. (laughs) From from university. (laughs) Yeah, um, I love. I actually loved it. I love the original and the other one that I actually really enjoy out of the entire series. I've seen probably five out of Isn't like, there like seven. Seven There's of them. Seven. I've seen yeah. five out of seven. Uh, I like the first and H two O Halloween H two O. Yeah, that's Armor. the one where Jamie Lee Curtis came back. Yeah. And then um, they did another one where they killed her finally, which was resurrection. Apparently... Yeah. And you know they're doing another one now. They're rebooting. It I've comes out that. next year. Yeah. Danny McBride is behind it. Yeah, he's a comedian. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was in like those Seth Rogen like buddy movies. Um, anyway, he's doing it and John Carpenter is an executive producer. How exciting. So that's going to be kind of cool. And Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back, which is kind of weird because her character died. They'll figure that out some, somehow. Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, they've made so many of them there. That's obviously just a testament to how popular they yeah. are. <laughs> and I do. And I really do enjoy those. Um, and I'll just say for, for anyone looking out of all those crazy Halloween movies, watch the first one. Watch H2O. Resurrection, which is the last one, is worth it too. It's all right. It's, it's decently watchable. But okay. H2O and Halloween, I definitely recommend. Yeah, so I've seen the first one and I've seen H2O. That's it. <laughs> yeah, probably because I've made you several yeah. times yeah. on H2O. <laughs> um, okay, so then obviously we have It, the original. Okay, yeah, so, so that's a TV movie. Yeah, it's funny. I um, So I, you know... I've been trying to get Tony to go and watch the new It with me. Like I've I literally know, asked the him. Like been so busy. I've asked him six times, and he's blown it's me true. off every time. Well, look, I'll be um, on, I'll be honest with you. I mean, number one, I've been very uh, busy. Yeah. Number two, that's not really the kind of movie I would go out and see in the theater. I wouldn't, and I can kind of save it for iTunes. But number three, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like being in a, you know, dark place in clothes that's going to be hard to get out to watching a scary movie because I'm a bit of a wimp. I, I'm not into scary movies. So, you know, it might be really scary. Like we went and saw like The Purge together and but that was right. a good film. It wasn't scary. Oh, I thought you it know? was scary. It's on my list. Okay. Oh, no, it's on mine too. <laughs> but like Pennywise legitimately scares the living shit out of me <laughs> so that brings me to the it's quite funny i yesterday i i watched the original it probably 15 years uh, no right. 12 years ago you just rewatched it and right? i just rewatched yeah. it I, I haven't but i saw it when it came out and i read the book which is phenomenal yeah Stephen and even king as well that's what excites me so much about the new film because i'll tell you something the old one uh the original while it has some really great kid actors seth green is in that I film know. i had no idea yeah. um and it's definitely spooky. It, 
I feel it definitely doesn't hold up very well. Tim Curry uh, is iconically Pennywise. plays Pennywise. Yeah. yeah, so he's super spooky. He is that. scary. Yeah, he for is sure. really scary. Well, it was a TV movie. It was yeah. not a professional film. <laughs> which which explains a lot because the second hour and a half is so boring. Right. That I I watched the whole film and I was like. You know, I can't wait to see the new version because it seems like they took all that was great from the story because it's a great coming of age story. Um, And they put it in, you know, in another. The moment it drops on iTunes, we'll do a movie night and we'll watch it. You You watch that without me, you're in so much trouble. Oh, no, no, no. I'll watch it with you. You know, it's coming up to $700 million at the box office. This film costs, I think, like $20 million. (laughs) And they thought it would be like pretty successful, but it has exceeded everyone's expectations and i hear it's yes it's genuinely spooky but But apparently it's also just a fantastic coming of age movie yeah so i am interested but i gave you my real reasons for kind of why i which all makes sense and honestly i um i tried to even see it with amy right she got too busy i got too busy i I, and then i was almost contemplating going alone and i'm like yeah no that's where i draw the line (laughs) i'm not watching a horror movie alone in a theater all right good so it definitely so obviously the original is worth watching, but be prepared for a long haul. It's three hours and seven minutes long. Yeah. It the, was a two part like TV yeah. movie. Yeah. So, um, what else you got? So on my older ones, these are two of the older ones, classics that I feel really hold up terribly. And I think you're going to agree with me on this. So nightmare on Elm street. Do you remember hold us? Up terribly? They, or you mean don't hold they up They so don't well. hold up. Well, we watched it together. Okay, so funny story. Hilarious. You want to tell the story about <laughs> no, the pizza it. man coming? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony and I, we were, we, were, we were like, okay, let's watch a horror movie. It was near Halloween. And we put on, we're like, let's watch some originals. We tried to watch The Exorcist, turned it off. So slow. It was so slow. So we start watching Nightmare on Elm Street. And it's so... Uh, so cheesy and so 80s and right. some of the shots are so this weird slow motion of him running it's just not it's, it's not scary it's not at all. scary that tony and i are, are in complete laughter like and the shakes. murders are like hammy yes yeah, so they hammy. get funnier oh and God. funnier yeah. we were just like we were, by laughing. The, we were laughing 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 but then we had ordered a pizza and then right at this scary part there's this Boom, knock the on door. the door and Yenny being who I am I scream really loud and it makes Tony laugh even more <laughs> and our dogs freak out and jump all over the place so that oh was kind God. of the scariest part of the whole movie was, was the pizza the knock man at the, at the door. door yeah so now look that said I still enjoyed it I enjoyed eh. it for its campy cheesy fun yeah but well, not look, for what it's supposed to well, be what I'm saying is Freddy Krueger is OG he's oh, like an yeah. OG horror villain you know and the concept Concept. Yeah, the concept is, is fascinating. And then you've got a young Johnny Depp in there as well. Oh my gosh, it's just, that's it's, right. It's just a really cheesy film. And yeah. again, it's over 30 years old. But it, yeah, I agree. That Did you was... actually watch the new one? The, the no, remake? No, I okay, didn't. So I'll Jackie tell you, Early Hurley. That yeah. I really enjoyed. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Because uh, the concept of Freddy Krueger is so creepy. Something that attacks you in your dreams. Right. That I was like, I want to see this. You can't go to sleep. Exactly. That's the whole concept, to, right? Because when I was little, Freddy I used Kruger to. Will I, used, get you. Yeah. I used to have night terrors. Right. So to me, this was very close to home, and I was like, and I loved the new one. I actually right. really liked it. Oh wow! It. Yeah, it didn't do very well. It just kind of got washed under yeah, the rug. I liked it. It was really good. Okay. Um, then Friday the Thirteenth, obviously. Okay. Well, real quick. So oh, on Nightmare sorry, on Elm Street. So again, I think they made like five or six of them and then they rebooted it right uh, i actually think even back in the day i watched a couple of them the first one's the only one i really remember yeah so in terms of people watching it again they should just watch the original one sure. uh, and then i guess if they want to try out the reboot they can yeah 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 okay good yeah. so you had friday the 13th yeah sorry um so friday the 13th obviously um i actually have the exact same analogy with this one i right. i tried to watch the original it, it just was not super scary to me, mm. but I loved the reboot. I found it scary, oh, really? jumpy, wow. and really enjoyed it. I don't know why, but I put on the original Friday the 13th just the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and that was actually quite good and quite scary, Maybe even though it was outdated. It and the music was really good. It's got this like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm not going to translate <laughs> that well over the microphone, but the music was really spooky. It's anyway, really, really... I, you know, then Danny came home and I had to turn it up because she hates horror movies. And I think them. now that you say good. that, it's interesting. Some of the best things about things like The Shining, Psycho, all these, the music, the music that well, that eerie... has so much to do with yeah. it. Yeah, the suspense, of yeah. course. Because to me, I want to be... 
on like on the edge of my seat scared yeah. every minute of the film and be you know in that anxious excited feeling which i can't stand so I that's why i'm it. not into horror <laughs> and i really put myself in it like I, yeah. I i delve into it ready for it yeah, it's so bizarre to me but clearly it's millions of other no well clearly millions of others love horror movies they love doing that yeah. so good for them and don't yeah. get me wrong there are some that i detest and i right. will cover a bit of that later where i actually get so scared that i that i'm like no this is insane yeah and anyway i mean friday the 13th it was ridiculous i was watching it on stars and they're all seven of them were on stars there's oh, of seven course. of them yeah. i was like it's ridiculous yeah they're showing all the halloween movies back to back on amc like wow. over and over and over again all right what else you got okay so my probably of my top three favorite horror movies that we've already discussed scream the original okay, i love scream scream yeah, they is made three of them right four Oh, because they rebooted it. Yeah. I've actually, I've seen all of them. Yeah. The first one is the one the I best. remember and I've seen it probably 10 times. I love Scream. It's, that would actually be probably my, the top of my yeah. list. Actually mine too. Yeah. If I, oh, cool. from the new genre, Scream is my favorite up there with, of the older ones, The Shining and so forth. And that's Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Yeah. Okay. So the original Who Scream. did Nightmare on Elm Street. Correct. Um, I love everything about that film. It's a slasher. It's funny. They did yeah. a beautiful job at making a scary slasher movie funny and unique. And it, it, it as you mentioned uh, to me before the podcast, it, it launched so many other films. Yeah, well, it kind of re-invented um, the horror genre. Yeah. It had kind of gone dead. It was huge, obviously, in the 70s and 80s, and it went dead. And then after Scream, you had I Know What You Did Last Summer. Which and I happen all... to actually really like. <laughs> yeah, and then all these other ones have kept going. And it also, I mean, Drew Barrymore, she's only in the beginning for 15 yep. minutes. It kind of reinvigorated her career. Yep. Ski Ulrich was in it. And yep. I mean, what happened to Ski Ulrich? I love that guy. He was in that. He's, he's in Riverdale. Craft. I know he's in Riverdale. Yeah. I, I just been the first season <laughs> you i can't did. believe i'm admitting that live on the podcast Tony. i actually liked it hey it's when i was so a kid good. no when i was a kid i used to read archie I loved so it. i actually yeah. anyway you're right he's the father of archie yeah. but um but yeah i think he was off the radar a while yeah he was great and then nev campbell that yeah. kind of launched her career so i mean i love scream you want to say some more about uh, it? well just obviously if you haven't seen screen seen scream <laughs> Uh, what are you doing? You have to see that movie. Obviously, if you get scared by slasher movies, don't watch it. It's the best one. It's a modern horror classic yeah. for sure. It's a but brilliant you're totally film. Right. It's a lot of fun, that film. So fun. It's scary. It's fun. It's just, it's entertaining. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Super entertaining. And I like, uh, you know, when I originally watched it, it really kept me wondering, like... You, you get thrown off a lot at who the killer is. And, oh, totally. And, and I like that, that up until the end, I really didn't really know. You know what I just realized as well, what I love so much about Scream is, yes, the story, the suspense, but the characters. Yeah. Because you, you had Nev Campbell, you have Skeet Ulrich, who's the boyfriend, but then you had a Dewey, David yeah. Ar yeah. Arquette, and Courtney, Lo uh, not Courtney, Courtney Love, Courtney Cox, who's the Friends, reporter. Yeah. yeah, so you the characters were great, great characters. in the screen. Even her, her, yeah. her ditzy, big boob, blonde friend yeah, was exactly. good and yeah. you, you just had so much going on in that film that was it was fun and it really makes you jump i mean at least 15 times the first one for sure yeah, yeah absolutely so, uh, and i've actually seen all of them several times two and three are terrible they're just very cheesy and not very well written but hmm. four was actually okay. was back in the realm of one and that's not, with emma roberts is correct in that. emma yeah. roberts is in that um it's, it's decent. I remember seeing it. I don't remember it staying in my mind. But the first one I highly recommend. Yeah. It's on the top of my list. I think it's one of the best horror films. And I think it's got something for everyone. Definitely. I have a, actually a few fun facts about Scream 2. Because I actually wanted to look up some things about that film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, so it was actually inspired, scarily enough, by a real-life series of student murders. Oh, wow. In Gainesville, Florida in 1990 uh, by a killer called Danny Harold Rowling, who was dubbed the Gainesville Ripper. Well, that's macabre. So, so that's pretty spooky. And also, um, yeah, so then John Carpenter. Um, John Carpenter? Wes Craven. Sorry, Wes Craven. Uh, also, sorry. It was actually originally not going to be named Scream. It was actually going to be named Scary Movie, believe it or not. And then they did those as yeah. spoofs afterwards Correct. of Scream. <laughs> exactly. And I found that really interesting that it was going to be... Because imagine Scream being named Scary Movie. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. And so what's the character from Scream? Uh, Ghostface, right? Is it called Ghostface? 
Yeah. I think that's yeah, the character. You know, you've got yeah. Jason Voorhees. Correct. Michael Myers. It doesn't really get it's... named in the film, but... Oh, I guess yeah. since then it's been known as like Ghostface or something. Because it's the white. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So, all right, that's Scream. Now, this is one that I know you haven't seen because we've talked about it. That's actually definitely one of my favorites is The Crazies. Oh, yeah, I've never seen that. Okay. The original or the remake? The with remake. Timmy, Timothy Timothy Oliphant, Oliphant yeah. Okay. Timothy Oliphant uh, plays a sheriff in a little town somewhere in Wyoming. And, I mean, shit just goes bad. You like this film? I love this film. Maybe I should try it out. It's, I've seen it three times. I just rewatched it last week. It said it was a zombie film. It is. Oh, okay. Sort of. In oh, a weird like way. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the, the premise, and I'll just give you this little tidbit, is I'll, I'll give you the first scene. He walks out onto like a, a, a baseball field. And it's like this, you know, tiny little town, lots of happy little people, blah, blah, blah. And some guy, like a farmer, just like walks out into the field and they all know this person and he just takes out a gun. And like he's got this crazed look in his eyes and he points it at Timothy Oliphant and shit goes bad from there. Like oh, wow. people start going nuts and okay. then the whole story Hence forms the name, from there. The crazies. Yeah. Okay, but you recommend it. It's, it's a good. brilliant film. Very jumpy. I found it. The character's interesting and it's... It's just got an interesting twist, too. Okay, good. All so right. I definitely recommend that to people. Um, then now I'm going to go into... Oh, well, actually, one of my favorite ghost horror movies is called The Others. Oh, with Nicole Kidman. Yes. I've seen that. That is a good film. I find it very slow. It is but slow. the twist is it's awesome. Brilliant. It's got a knockout twist. Yeah. And it is very spooky in, right. the, in the sense that if you like a good ghostly horror movie... It's, a, it's one that's very well acted, and it is slower, though. It's not yeah. action-packed, so no, I, I like that. I do recommend the others. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Nicole Kidman. She's good in it. The she story is. is good, and the twist is... I did not see it coming yeah. at all. <laughs> it was good. It yeah. was really good. And then, obviously, uh, we, we touched on it already, The Purge, original. Yeah, well, I like them all. I actually really like the them. second one. Um, but the, you and I went and saw those. So again, that's the very rare time that I've gone to the theater to watch like a quote. Unquote, it's kind of like a horror thriller. Horror thriller. I love the concept. But it is a slasher still to a degree. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's pretty spooky. But yeah. the concept of The Purge yeah. I found so fascinating where you're in this kind of Futuristic. future where to keep order one day of the year... Um, basically all murder and violence isn't illegal. So yeah. people can purge themselves. Just And the concept is just so spooky. So twisted. And I thought it worked. I actually really enjoyed the first film. Yeah. And it did really well. Uh, the reason a lot of people didn't like the first film and why they really wanted more, which I thought was actually a good point, is... It was such a fascinating concept and world, but they kept it all enclosed in, in one house. house. Yeah. So that's why in the second film, it was like out all over, um, which is probably why I enjoyed the second one so much. That makes sense. Yeah. The third one, I wasn't a big fan of, actually. No, Election it got a little year. weird, that one. Yeah, it was one. Purge, Purge Anarchy, the yeah. second one, which is really good. And then Purge Election, Election Year was the third one. You know, they're doing a fourth one called Purge the Island, which is a prequel of how the purge came about. It's a good idea. Yeah. So what I love about the first one, obviously it's Ethan Hawke right. and Lena Headley from Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah she's great. And that. she is a brilliant, like, you know, kick-ass kind of character she's in that great film. In it, she yeah. does great. So, and I kind of, I really love the first one yeah. and I love the second one. Yeah, I've one. seen the first one many times. And that's a, a rare horror film that Danny, my wife, loves. She loves the purge yeah. movies. Those are different. Very unlike her. She hates horror movies. Yeah. Like, with a passion. She does. I don't hate horror movies. I just find most of them kind of stupid. Like I said, right. like torture porn. She has a disdain. So that's kind of rare and few between that she loves the Purge films. Yeah, so we both <laughs> definitely recommend The Purge. Definitely. Um And then I already covered that one, Halloween H2O. Okay, Which one? Cab uh, Halloween H2O. We oh, already yeah, you covered did that it. one, yeah. Uh, ha uh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh, yeah. So I've seen that. I enjoyed it when it came out. And then I just kind of, meh. Oh, I love that You love movie. it, huh? Okay, yeah. so I saw it in the theater. Um, you love it because it's got Chris Hemsworth in well, it. Well, <laughs> it's a bonus. I adore Chris Hemsworth, yes. But that film was, uh, and, and even on uh, your favorite, uh, the um, Screen Junkies, they mention this film of how unique and the different podcast, it is. Screen Junkies. Yeah. It is different. The concept is unique. I'll give you that. And I remember enjoying it when I watched it. I have it on Blu-ray. Oh, um, And good. I went to watch it again and I kind of lost interest after 15 minutes. It was weird. You know, um, 
it is a it is a very different kind of film but i i just oh, i found it fascinating it's 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 so different it still has all the jumpy parts yet the ending totally messes with your head you know i while you were talking i just realized kind of what it is it, the film starts just like any normal horror movie it does bunch of horny you know college kids in the woods and then you're right the whole third act totally. just goes batshit crazy yeah and that's where the film does get entertaining really entertaining. and obviously i just didn't keep watching it to that point again yeah. so it's you a film kind of, i yeah, recommend for you're sure. totally right first 20 minutes are sort of meh yeah but then it gets real good yeah it is a good film and i actually again i i bought it on blu-ray a couple months ago and i just didn't get through it so i should try and watch it again because the first time i saw it i actually re i was surprised with how different it was yeah so i yeah. love that and i definitely recommend it to people. cabin in the woods cabin in the woods yeah, and he recommends great it. film um obviously now we both saw this and by the way you've only had one you haven't seen out of all my lists You're so right. <laughs> you saying you don't like horror is actually not true uh get out that okay just that, came that was out. great so yeah, that so was a jordan peel from key and peel i know no you say but i actually love get out yeah <laughs> ladies no. first <laughs> no it was you that got me onto it actually because you started getting the buzz on it and everything and blah 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 and then, well, then the... i will go then <laughs> i mean well number one key and peel are like these batshit yeah. crazy comedians, comedians yeah. of a great show that i love and i love their sketches and then that so that's how it first came on my radar was that jordan peel was directing a horror film yeah and i was like what what <laughs> And then uh, when it started uh, going through the, the circuit on the festivals, it got like incredible buzz. People were like, this film is amazing. And I was like, what? You know, Jordan Peele? Well, yeah, I just well. thought that was really interesting. Um, and then the trailer came out and it really did look, it looked like a whole kind of, uh, you know, flip or a spin on like racial tension. And yep. it, it was, I mean, it just looked, it looked so, so spooky and unique and um oh you that, invited me over to watch it well we yeah watched it so together. then it got released and it was a huge hit in the theater it was one of the most successful horror films of this year it came yeah. out right at the beginning of the year but it made a couple hundred million dollars yeah and it propelled jordan peele right to the top as like a director to like you know watch out for which is great good for him um but again i didn't see it in the theater so when it came out on itunes i watched it with you yeah um, and we really enjoyed it. And again, Danny liked that one too. That's right. Because it was different. Yeah. And it's not your traditional horror movie. No. There's two things about Get Out. One, it's quite funny. It is funny. It's funny, especially uh, the main character, who's this Afri African-American guy and, and his best friend. And they're kind of like... Yeah, exactly. The way they kind of keep talking about, you know, all the white folk and stuff like that. Because he's dating um, a, a white girl. Like a very her, middle, yeah, middle very of the middle class. Yeah, very middle class white lady. And he goes to the, you know, their home and meets the, the all-white family. And they're all so welcoming to him. And anyway, it just goes really sinister from there. Um, it has a really unique story. Yeah. It's quite quite spooky it's not really a scary movie but again it was just so well done it's a, a, i enjoyed it another eerie spooky yeah. one and it like you said very clever phenomenal acting yeah. oh, and you very guess well you acted. guessed the, the twist and i did i did That's he guessed right. the twist at the beginning and that was one that actually where i was a little bit off on the twist right. so i, I was, guess that yeah. didn't ruin it for me no. i still enjoyed it but i did call it yeah that was good so definitely recommend get out now this is one i know we both love and we're about to watch again your next oh i love you oh, so yeah. good so you you take the lead even, on that too yeah so i don't even know who's in that film they're all unknown like totally really. unknown okay your next is a film that came out couple years ago we watched it about two years ago we watched it about yeah. two years ago i think it, maybe it came out five or six years ago it wasn't a huge no. success i think it did okay but i think it got pretty good reviews all i remember because i kind of read everything i keep up yeah, with almost everything do. so i guess even horror i kind of keep up with it i remember a lot of critics were saying like it surprised them it, it yeah. takes a different turn because it does i'm not going to ruin this film no don't uh, even though it's been out for a while um but what i loved about it is yeah it's a complete unknown cast but number one it's got great uh, the acting is all great really good um it really has some good jumps some you know freaking awesome jumps but it has such a great twist yeah in your yeah. standard horror genre yeah. and i won't say more than that it just flips the switch on everything totally and it's so good and the main girl 
is so badass in that film. And yeah. I wish I had seen her in more stuff. Maybe she has been, but it, it's a great film. So yeah, so I couldn't recommend your next more. It's That was a, a genuine surprise, especially as like a horror film. I yeah. consider it a, like a hidden gem. It is a total hidden gem. And it is now on my list of top three favorites. Yeah, so like, gonna, I love it. We're going to watch it again, we right? We are, next Horror Sunday. night, yeah, next week. Um, <laughs> so yeah, guys, check out your next. It's brilliant. Um, Woman in Black with Daniel Radcliffe. You like that, huh? Well, God, I think I fell asleep. The reason I'm bringing this one up is it was spooky as really? heck. Yeah, I, I mean, I did, did not did like well. it. I'm, oh. it's, it's funny. I know it's on my list, but I'm bringing it up because. Okay, I, because you like Daniel Radcliffe. No, <laughs> you I liked it. All, I liked Harry it. Potter. It was one of those that I liked all the way until the end, but I was oh. not a fan of the ending. I fell asleep. But it was brilliantly, in terms of like the ghostly apparitions and okay. things, it was beautifully done. So okay. I do think it's worth a check out. Okay. That's just why no, I bring it up. No problem. Um, okay. So this is actually, to me, the scariest horror movie that I have seen for me, The Conjuring. The Conjuring? The yeah, Conjuring so scared the crap out of me. Insanely popular with uh, Patrick Wilson oh. and Vera Farmiga. I've okay. I watched The Conjuring just because, like, the bead and Sarah Beth and Julie and everyone was pressuring me, saying it was the best thing since sliced cheese. I didn't dislike it. Okay. Um, I was surprised how unscary I found it. I thought it was really well acted and a good story, but I just didn't. I, it wasn't bad. I just didn't find it really oh, I scary. Found it so terrifying. As nearly I everyone had else did nightmares too. and That's night funny. terrors about that. Okay, there's. I don't know if you guys have seen the preview for The Conjuring, but it's considered the clap clap movie. Oh. And um, I don't know what are, that means. <laughs> the, the ghost goes clap clap. It's oh. very scary. Anyway, um, there are some scenes in that film that are so terrifying. There's a YouTube video I watched the other day of the dog watching the scene of The Conjuring. And the dog that, shits his pants. <laughs> <laughs> if he had pants. <laughs> no, he's barking at the, the movie. Oh. And I'm like... And again, I remember how scared I was in that part of the film. And I envisioned this freaking demon in my house at night. No, That's look, how scared I was. The Conjuring was hugely successful. Um, and it spawned not only a sequel, but a bunch of spinoffs. So you've got Annabelle, Annabelle and yeah. then Annabelle Creations. And then The Nun, which I don't even remember. Uh, I didn't get into any There's of those. There's a whole those. bunch of them. Yeah. So it's, it's wildly popular yeah let's put it this way i was so scared i did not watch the sequel so all right if well, you want a real scare you want to get your uh, pants soiled watch the conjuring yes or as negan put it in last week's walking dead you better have your shit and pants on that's what negan said yeah it's a really good episode oh god <laughs> Oh, yeah. See, Yanni is obsessed with The Walking Dead, which is funny as well, because I got a lot of people into The Walking Dead. I know you I did. Loved, you got me into The Walking I Dead. I loved The Walking Dead. And I just gave up after season six. Too many. It just ripped my heart out. Like Too many every times. episode. I, I got so worse. depressed. It like sucked <laughs> out all of my life force energy. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm probably going to go back and just watch it. I'll just again tell you one it. thing about season eight. Tangent now on The Walking Dead. Season eight is going to be nothing but an all-out freaking awesome war okay. it's no more of this anyway it's death 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 yeah, of yeah. every major character exactly. you love no spoilers and it's it, obviously jeffrey dean morgan is amazing as so, negan the main yeah, villain he's incredible anyway yeah so, so i stopped watching little... the walking dead i'll, I'll probably uh, catch it up sooner or later yeah. <laughs> continue so um this one we watched last year or the year before house on haunted hill the remake, oh, not the original. I haven't seen that. It has an original from the 70s that I never saw. House on Haunted Hill, I think, came out in like 98, So it's 95. clearly about a haunted house. Yeah, so it's about basically this kind of crazy wealthy guy that invites five different people up to this big mansion on a hill that used to be an old psychiatric institution where tons of really bad stuff happened. That's not like intimidating or odd at all. <laughs> right. And they all decide to go. Yeah. And basically the winner... The deal, the invite says you stay one night in this house and you'll get a million dollars if you can stay the night. Wow. And they lock the doors and it, it, it's pretty damn scary. Andy okay. Sherman got me onto that one. It was I've really never heard creepy. Of it. Okay. And in that, that scary movie night, Andy Sherman also jumped up on me and made me spill my cop really? popcorn. Yeah. Well, just, damn you, Andy yeah, Sherman. Right? Andy That's Sherman. That's one of uh, Yanni's friends. So. Um, okay. So then obviously paranormal activity. So I haven't seen them. They've made several of them. And again, I remember the first one was a sensation. Yeah. 
I, I think I, I saw tried, that in the theater. I think I tried to watch it. I found it boring. I don't know. Okay, so in the theater, the first one was legitimately jumpy and interesting and spooky. Okay. Then I tried to watch the second. That was boring. And, and I've third, fourth, it just didn't interest me from okay. there. They, so the first one you definitely recommend? Yeah, I definitely recommend the first one. And they are a very unique kind of horror movie. These are live video yeah. footage, basically. Well, just, fake live video right, footage. Fake yeah. footage, of course, yeah. of just jumps and scares. Yeah, they just didn't interest me yeah. at all. See, that's the type of horror films that to me are like cash yeah. grabs. I, I don't see the point. I but understand that. It was very successful. So, so I would say, though, see one of them. Um, the first one. The first one, yeah. Okay, Paranormal Activity. Or and then obviously Sixth Sense. So yeah, so I love that movie. It's a great thriller. Obviously, it's mostly famous for the twist. Yes. So I don't find that film infinitely rewatchable. But I will tell you, the last time I watched it, I was like, "Wow, this film's quite spooky." It is. I mean, it really spooky. is quite spooky. Yeah. You know, uh, again, it's all overshadowed by the twist. It's M Night Shyamalan. I didn't even realize that that it was him. Oh, as that a was director. his big breakout. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> I probably do know how to say his M. name. M Night right? Shyamalan. Shyamalan. It's just too. Fun. But anyway, um, The Sixth Sense was fantastic. Such uh, can a I tell you a, a true story that's infuriating about The, the Sixth Sense? Please. Um, I went out to see that with a whole group of people. And as I was in the hallway of the theater, I started talking to this like really cute girl, started chatting with her. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, did you watch? She goes, Sixth Sense. Oh, so good. He's dead at uh, the end. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Literally minutes before me going into the no. theatre. So while I enjoyed it... Oh, you had it, it ruined. Right, for everyone else, The Sixth Sense was a oh, sensation. It, it was like, what? Yeah. He's dead? And I went in. And I, the funny thing is, I didn't even really know what she was talking about. So I was so like, funny. damn you, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> At least I got a number. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. But uh, they, they were covering that again. I, I was listening to those horror uh, screen junkie movie fights, and they were like, if you took out that twist or like um actually observed that in in the movie he wears the same outfit in every single scene oh well if you go back to <laughs> you that can movie, actually he never talks to anyone else directly. apart from the kid yeah when when um he first appears in the movie with the kid which is Haley joel osmond who's phenomenal He's in that awesome. film and tony collette is the wife who's uh, yeah. sorry the mother yeah. who's wonderful and then bruce willis obviously is the main main character um but when bruce willis is uh, first goes to the kid the kid is cold. Yeah, that's You know, right. which is what happens. Anyway, there's all these little so clues. And when he talks to the wife, Bruce Willis talks she's to the wife at, at the dinner table. She's not even looking at him. He's not talking to her. It's so well done. It's yeah, got these so scenes well where he's like sitting next to Tony Collette. And as the camera pans them, they're both kind of laughing. Yeah. So you get the idea they were talking to each other, but you never actually see it. Yeah. Anyway, we've totally spoiled Sixth Sense. Well, but everyone has probably seen that. years old. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a classic. And I, I mean, it's a great movie. Yeah, so... Is. Uh, it, I found it rewatchable. It still scares me to yeah. this day. It's definitely spooky and brilliant. Yes. Yeah, um, so the Omen. Have you seen oh, the, the Omen? original or the no, remake? No, the remake. Okay, I've seen the original. Okay, wasn't a big fan. It's about Damien, the 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 child, devil the child, devil, devil yeah. child, spooky child, and the little Catholic it was outfit. Spooky man. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Julia Stiles is in the 2006 version. Yeah, I it never saw was the remake. spooky. Okay. Very, yeah, very worth watching. I the, really liked it. The original is considered um, very famous. And yeah. I, again, I happen to know some weird facts about the original film. Oh, yeah. It's notorious because a bunch of the people that worked on that movie or in that movie died Ooh. in freak accidents. That's really spooky. Yeah, there are really weird stories about that original Omen movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, well, the the original or the new one, guys. Let's, the Omen. The Omen. <laughs> okay, so then there's uh, Last House on the Left. Uh, it's okay. It's also con actually a remake, 2009. Yeah, so uh, remember how I told you on remakes and reboots? They've literally remade oh, yeah. every horror movie yeah. under the in one way or moon, another. Earth, and stars. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. But uh, and, and, and uh, like I said, in a lot of them, I do like the later right. ones because they're more real. That's why they remake them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Last House on the Left was really quite terrifying. It's the concept is there's it basically all. a couple of girls who are out on a at a vacation home and they go somewhere locally to town to pick up some guys and these guys that pick them up end up being these completely psychotic crazy guys. Anyway, okay. it goes on from there and it's pretty terrifying. Okay. Last so you House on it. the Left. I do. I liked it. Okay. Uh, then this one I know you've seen and love because you actually got me to watch it. Dawn of the Dead. 
the Zack Snyder remake. Correct. Yeah, so that's a, a remake I think is really superior. So I superior. I love Dawn of the Dead. It came out in the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. Zack Snyder, that was one of his first films. Visually, uh, it's so fast paced. It's a zombie paced. movie, guys, it's a zombie in case you film. didn't know. It's so fast paced. It's so intense. So intense. Um, I love that movie. It's so well done. Yeah. Sarah Polly, Ving Rhames. We talked about it before, but yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, so it's in my top five horror movies. Definitely. So Dawn of the Dead, guys. And then right to follow that, 28 Days Later, Good. which so we both love. That I have on my list as my number one horror movie. Okay. You know, I, I told you, it's kind of between that uh, scream and another one, which I'm sure we're going to talk about in a second. Maybe. Um, but for length, uh, like longevity, you know, in terms of a uh, classic, uh, yeah. standing the test of time, I, 28 Days Later is the only horror quote unquote movie that I will go back and watch yeah. Every year. Yeah. I've seen it 10, 15 also times. Also a zombie movie, guys. Yeah, Danny Boyle. It was a British zombie flick. It brought the world Killian Murphy. Uh, it's such a great film. Brilliant the soundtrack, movie. the acting. It's so intense and it's so well done. And they're not really zombies. They're, again, they're kind of like infected because yeah. they go really fast. and oh, Super, just, that's what's scary about yeah. those. You know, like in The Walking Dead, at least they're slow. Right. And these 28 zombies. 28 days are, later, oh. they are. They're like Sonic the fucking Hedgehog <laughs> zombies. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Anyway, 28 days later. Brilliant film. It's, uh, to me, that's a classic modern yeah. masterpiece. And that's a film that, to me, also. Uh, spans more than just horror. Totally. It's just it's just a phenomenal film. Totally. It's like a cl modern classic film. So I love it. Absolutely. So that should be on your list, guys. And then one I'm going to mention... Oh, I will, I'm going to say oh, one thing ahead. real quick because it doesn't get enough mention is 28 Weeks Later, the sequel... There's a sequel? ...is actually very good. Tell yeah. me. Yeah, well, it's not Danny Boyle. Killian Murphy's not in it. It's a complete... It's Robert Carlyle. Uh, it's Begbie from Trainspotting, oh the, the guy from The Full Monty. Wow. Yeah, anyway, it's actually, a, I've seen it twice, and it's a, a Jeremy Renner's in it before oh, wow. he was famous. It's actually a really good film. It's called 20, 28 Weeks Later. I'd love to see and it's, that. And it's just a, a sequel, it's like a direct sequel, and it came out right after the success of 28 Days Later and then kind of got forgotten about. Oh, wow. I was actually thinking of putting it on my hidden gems list. Oh, but wow. But again, I had to kind of shorten it because it was quite big, but um, I recommend that. Both cool. of them. I mean, the first one is a classic, but the second one is a good horror movie. Okay, good, guys. So 28 weeks later as well. Yep. All right, so one I'm going to mention just out of the sheer how I actually... <laughs> I just, This is another one that I dislike because of how scary I found it. I found it very dark, uh, incredibly scary. And honestly, if you're like a mother with kids, I don't recommend this movie. Sinister. Ethan oh, we Hawk. watched that together. Remember that? terrifying and a horrible well, that was it, you know it was i guess a good horror movie but it was such a disturbing so disturbing yucky film yucky. especially at the end yeah you know and i will admit there were a few legitimate jumps and scares Serious in jumps. that film but it um, is yucky guys like it's yeah. not one that i actually enjoyed i'm just putting it on there because it's actually very famous it was too depressing it to was me. depressing like, just really Dark. dark and depressing but yeah. uh, it, it is a pretty good horror movie and it's ethan hawk and his performance is amazing it. Yeah. yeah so it depends what you can handle Sinister. i won't be watching it again and i did not watch the sequel it was too much that's for me. right they did a sequel yeah. yeah um then these got a lot of acclaim and i this is funny because i did actually, you watch them I, i'm gonna, gonna i'm talking about the next the oh. next movie <laughs> okay. um insidious so okay so i i Insidious is such a stupid film, especially towards the third act. I was just going to say, the beginning makes it really scary, and then it gets ridiculous. But let me tell you, I, I maybe it was with you, but when I was living in the apartment with Sarah yeah. and Julie, there was a whole group of us, probably like 10 or 12 of us, we turned off all the lights, and that film legitimately scared the shit out really? of me. Really? Yeah, so I, I, so I always remember Insidious, for, but it, it's just got some great classic jumps where... Oh, okay. One second there's a guy, and then next second there's someone behind him. Oh, or yeah. there's something silent. In the mirror. And then next thing there's a noise. Or Yeah, and I just remember, and maybe it was because I was with a bunch of girls and one or two other guys, and it was all dark. But And towards the end, it gets ludicrous. Really ludicrous. But, and I know they've made at least one or two other sequels. Three, I think. Okay, yeah. yeah. But the first one it is on my list because it, it genuinely made me jump yeah and it does. that's the only reason why i liked it otherwise i think it's a totally stupid horror movie yeah. <laughs> and it's pg-13 it's not even super gary uh super gory but it has 
legitimate scares. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It, it is worth watching. Uh, the, uh, yeah, just the end gets a little... That's Patrick Wilson too. Yep. Yeah, and Rose Byrne. Yep. Correct. Okay, Insidious. All the right, first and one. then this is obviously on your list, um, but I absolutely loved it. Another zombie film, Train to Busan. Yeah, so Train to uh, Busan. Um, I'm obsessed with that film. Yes. Yeah, I, I've watched... I discovered that film six months ago. Yeah. I've watched it three times. That's amazing. Now, that's a <laughs> Korean subtitled zombie movie. Korean, yeah. 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 Sorry, Korean. <laughs> Just in um, case people didn't get that. It's so good. It, it's so one of the good. best zombie And I films. hate subtitles, guys. I hate yeah. subtitles, and I loved this film. It's one of the best zombie films I've ever seen. It's one of the best horror films I've ever brilliant. seen. And it really is up there in one of the best films because the characters yeah the acting which again for a foreign film is so impressive you get there's like about five or six yeah. main you characters so and storylines and you get so invested in yeah. them i i mean I, again for a couple weeks i put it on the top of my list above scream and yeah. above 28 days later but then i was kind of like you know what those film have stood the test of time yeah this one i love it now because it's so fresh in my mind i want to revisit it in like a year and a couple of years yeah. but i cannot talk more about train to busan it's such so a good film. good i'll let you say something oh, oh no 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 <laughs> I, I just it i no he said it all it is um it has a, an, a phenomenal amount of great jumps great characters it, it and i don't know how a foreign film sucked me in so well because i don't like foreign films. i think again i really think it's the character development. it must be you get so invested in the characters it's a very emotional film yeah. and that film is not a feel-good movie no, it has not at all. no happy ending well, really well to some degree, to me in a horror really. movie if anyone survives yeah that's honestly a happy ending. All right, like, and we're talking to a about degree. a train, so you can yeah. imagine there's a lot of a high death count. Yes, definitely it's, high death count. And also, it's relentless. It's nonstop. Yeah. It's never quiet. It's never dull or no. boring. It, oh, I lo- anyway, so I brilliant. love that movie. Definitely watch that, guys. Train to Busan. I believe it's on Netflix. It was. I don't think um, it is anymore. It actually got probably got popular, so now they want you to rent it. So let me tell you something which you probably don't know. Um, it might still be on iTunes. They released a companion um animated movie called oh. Soul Station. Okay. It's a cartoon, but it's hard R rated. Oh wow. Which is a prequel to Train to Busan. Is it good? It's really good. Oh cool. Yeah. I watched the whole thing. It's really good. Awesome. It surprised me with how gritty and intense it was because it's a cartoon. Um and obviously it's subtitled. But it's called Soul Station. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Okay. See if you can find it. Nice. Um it's like a companion prequel to Train to Busan. I'll watch it. it had awesome. an incredible twist in it. Like, aside from the whole zombie thing, it, it, the story was fantastic with an amazing twist. It really blew me away. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to cover, actually, on my list that isn't on officially on my list, but okay. I thought of it, <laughs> is The Exorcist. So, <sighs> something I wanted to say about The Exorcist is I couldn't get through the um, original to save my life. I got bored. I watched the remake they made. Of The Exorcist? Yes. When did they make a remake? It, it, you know who it's with? Who? It's with um, The Way Way Back. What's his name? Um, Steve Carell? No. Sam Rockwell? Sam Rockwell. Oh, really? It's a, it's when did it come out? Like a few years ago. It went completely unnoticed. Wow. I watched it and I really enjoyed Hold it. Hold on. Is it a true remake or is no. it like a spin-off? It's a spin-off remake. Sorry. Because they've done it's, tons yeah, of Exorcist. It's, it's like nothing like the, the damnation, original. The damnation, the beginning to the end. Yeah, you know, it's nothing like the, the original. It was just good. <laughs> this yeah. time for good. <laughs> Um, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I already told you. So you finished it, right? I did. So the ex- oh, so you've never finished it? The no, original. I remember we blew from it, and then I was like, no. So I told you. So I've tried. I had tried to watch it ten times. I finally finished it last year. It is a very long movie, guys. The last act, the last forty-five minutes, is actually quite good. So you should try it. It's up there with The Shining on m- many lists. They'll usually either have, when they talk about the best horror films, they'll have either yeah. The Exorcist at number one or The Shining at number Correct. one. The Shining, I won't disagree with because I love that movie, even though it's not my personal favorite. The Exorcist, I don't get the acclaim. Yeah, I don't either. I do understand when it came out why it was so controversial and shocking because, sure. I mean, sure. it's about this 11, 12-year-old girl who yeah. gets possessed and she does all the demon does all kinds of 
you know horrible things, horrible yeah. despicable things to this little girl and there's like um, iconic things in yeah. that film yeah and they're, they're very grotesque um and it's also a very profound story but um no i finally got through it i i could understand from especially the last act why it has some acclaim but it's so slow quite dull and i just i don't think it lives up to the hype um there's a tv show now as well with the exorcist yeah, and so I've heard. you know i know they made a bunch of films but yeah i had put it uh, i'd kind of put a note as well to talk about the exorcist just because i don't want to upset you know the hardcore fans because sure. it, it's got a hardcore fan base it's just it's not for everyone no. so we happen to be in that camp yeah so that's my main list there are others okay. uh, but i wanted to keep it obviously to to kind of my, my top recommended films. It was a really good list, and you're right. A lot of them I knew. Some of them I didn't. Um, do, do you have any others you thought of? Uh, not to this moment. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, need to add. Yeah, so I'll go through a few. Um, I toyed with putting this on the list because it's not a true horror, and then I said, screw it, I'm going to do it, okay. which is Silence of the Lambs. No, that's um, on horror movie lists. That's why I put it there. Yeah. I didn't really con- – it's kind of like seven – I didn't really consider it a, a true horror. It's, it's Thriller Borders horror. Well, what's funny is Seven isn't on many of the horror lists. Silence of the Lambs is on nearly all of them. Mm. So I'll put it on, on there. Just I mean, Silence of the Lambs is one of the best the films of all time. brilliant film. Yeah, I'm not even going to say much Which I saw more for the first that. time a few weeks ago, obviously, yeah. and I absolutely loved it. That's right. You watched it with me, yeah. finally. Yeah, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins, Jodie Foster, so good. Hannibal Lecter. Uh, it's a masterpiece. That film, oh my God. It's quite it's, horrifying. You can, can judge oh, it absolutely. as a horror yeah. movie. It's so intense, and it's the true definition of a classic as well. Yeah. It so stands the test of time. It really does. Well, look, I'm excited because I actually do have a few that I think will be kind of good. cool. Um, okay, good. Let the right one in. Did I ever make you watch this? So um, give me the story and I'll... Okay, Let the Right One In is a Swedish subtitled film about a, a young... Uh, is it a young... Yeah, a young girl. Yeah. That's a, a vampire. She's a vampire. Okay, no, I haven't and seen And she befriends this boy, this very timid boy who's getting bullied okay. at school. And it's... It's like a romance. It's okay. this beautiful love story, but she's a she's a fucking vampire. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it gets quite gruesome. It it's a very artistic film. Okay. You should watch it with me. I love this movie. It's Is it one older? My, it's about ten years old. And it's subtitled? Yeah, just so you know, they mm. did a remake. Oh, uh, okay. An American remake. That's which, the one I've called, seen promoted. Yeah, it's called Let Me In, oh. and it's with uh, Chloe Grace Moretz, the right. girl from Hit See, Girl. I'd from probably watch that. <laughs> That, it's actually not a bad remake, but the original is better. Okay. It's just so beautiful. You know when like a disturbing movie is made kind of beautifully? Yeah, Like totally. it's haunting? That's what Let the Right One In is like to okay. me. It's a, I highly recommend that All right, film. let's do it. And look, Let Me In is the American remake, so if you really can't stand the <laughs> subtitles, watch that because it's not bad. I'll probably see both. I mean, okay. yeah. All right, so I did put this on my list, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Ugh. And I'll tell Ugh. you why. For me, that Hate film these movies. is... Well, I, I don't care about all the multiple remakes. Uh, and you're right. We tried to watch oh, the... Re- so ac- awful. That was actually an accident. I meant to buy the original. Oh, and we right. So we were... One Halloween a few years ago, we were watching it, and it was like a remake so, from the 2000s. It was, and it was sickening. Awful. It was so sickening. Well, so is the original, but it's so disturbing and Ugh. spooky, and it stood the test of time that I, I'm giving it a mention because it's a true Fair horror enough. film. And even though it's very eerie and disturbing, it, you know, it kind of it does deserve respect for yeah. the genre it kind of created. It did. And it's where Leatherface came from. That, right. You know, really And then the Saw villain. movies then came after that off the right. same kind of genre of horror movies. I'm not a fan of those kind of films. The solely chopping up body killers. Well, it has an actual story, but yes, it's very, yeah. it gets quite gory, you know, putting the women on the meat hooks and yeah, yeah they're like that, cannibals. That stuff and, I can't quite yeah. handle so well. Uh, I it, mean, saying that it's not much better in the slashes I watch, but exactly. somehow, somehow those, because of their comedic aspect and the, the, the sex they add into it and whatever, right. it's kind of fun. I guess so. Yeah. See, torture porn. <laughs> <laughs> you literally just made my point. <laughs> anyway, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is... It, it, I mean, it's a classic horror film, and I, I see why, and I respect it. I'll, right. I'm willing to rewatch the original. Okay, I'm putting this on the list because okay. it actually counts, which is Shaun of the Dead. That, it that's does. A, it's it, a horror it comedy. It counts. Shaun of the Dead is. I was going to put it one on, of my but I knew films. you would. <laughs> yeah, Nick Frost, Simon Pegg. Um, 
you know, so it's, good. it's so funny, but it's genuinely scary at it times is. It and is. quite emotional, yeah. you know, so that totally goes on. And there. Uh, to validate that again, they brought it up on screen during his movie fights as a horror film. Well, so we're, it's, we're really promoting that podcast. I do <laughs> love the podcast it is now. It's your fault. I know. I've been listening to all the back ones and I do <laughs> love it. All right, um, good. But uh, yeah, Shaun of the Dead guys is brilliant. And if you want, a, a, it is a little bit of a lighter horror movie because yeah. it is a comedy with Simon Pegg. So, yeah, so that's Edgar Wright, the guy who directed yeah. Baby Driver, Hot Fuzz. Oh, that you makes know, he sense. does all those movies with Simon Pegg. Okay, good. So following that is similar is Zombieland. Um, okay. Again, it's it's a zombie horror yeah, comedy. Yeah, but that one is not scary. It's actually very simple. Oh, the clown was scary. It's got it's when they're in the not bathroom. Scary. Well, I do, and I it, love that film. It was on lists similar to Shaun of the Dead, so I, I love it. Fair enough. Um, you know, it's a horror comedy. Um, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg, uh, Woody Harrelson, Emma Stone, yeah, um, Abigail. Breslin. Definitely more comedy than horror, yeah. guys. It's not super scary. Best cameo ever from Best. Bill, Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. It's okay. a great movie. I've seen it fifteen times. Yeah. Okay, good. I have John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, um, I have never seen that. Okay, you do need to watch that. So I told you, that, I mean, that is a great horror movie. Uh, I had seen it when I was young. I watched it a few months ago, and I was surprised how good, oh, good. it still was. Good. Uh, even though the prosthetics and makeup and, like, the kind of monster um, effects don't hold up so well, the film it is really good. It's very claustrophobic. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Cool. So that yeah, definitely... that's on uh, all those lists as one of the top horror movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, another Korean film is called The Host. Did you ever see that? No, I know there was a remake it's of fantastic. that. Fantastic. Of The Host? Yeah, I'm really? pretty sure. Yeah, I've seen it on a lot of oh, lists. Well, it's about a monster. Yeah. Um, anyway, that is a heartbreaking film. Quite scary. It's really good. Again, it's subtitled, but uh, mm. I definitely recommend it. Okay, so I put seven on here. David Fincher yeah. with Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. More thriller than horror, but yes. Yeah, just because, I mean, it's got some. Oh, the way vile. he kills people with the, each one yeah. of the seven deadly sins is really yeah. horrific. It is awful. And then, but it was a good movie. What's in the box? Yeah. What's in the box? You trying to be Brad Pitt? Yeah, the end, man. <laughs> it's really... Anyway, it's such a good film. Film. <laughs> Love that movie. It's a great movie. And that's Kevin Spacey. You know, yeah. Kevin Spacey had just won an Oscar for The Usual Suspects, and he's not in the credits or anything. Oh, for, wow. He specifically said, don't put my name on this movie. I want to just blindside people that I come in as the end as cool. John Doe. That's awesome. Fun fact. Okay, Jaws. I, that has to be on this list. Jaws is so spooky. As we discussed, it made practically everyone not want to go yes, in the water. Yes, shark movies. You see, I would have put that on my list because I, I love Jaws. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. But in terms of, yes, it's spooky, it's scary, but jump dun, shark dun, movies. Dun, 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 it's too high pitched. You've got to go lower. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's definitely this. considered a horror movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. I love Jaws. And obviously, if you haven't seen the original Jaws uh, it's Spielberg's one of his first most famous films. Please watch it. Have you seen Funny Games? They brought that up. I don't think uh, I've seen it. Okay, oh, so you mentioned this. It sounded horribly scary. Oh, well, it, again, it's more of a psychological horror. Yeah. I is, love psychological okay, horror. Okay, so it's I think it's an Austrian film that came out. Is this um, subtitled maybe again? By a director called Michael Haneke. No, but then they did a american remake okay the same director did it michael pitts in it naomi watts tim roth okay um and it's a frame by frame remake almost oh wow both are extremely disturbing what's the concept um i told you about this film it's yeah. these two like preppy boys dressed in white who knock on all these like high class um you know homes and just torture and murder them and just knock home to home so messed but these up. these murderers they're kind of like the protagonists of the movie. You still they like them, you mean? No, not at all. They talk to you. Oh. They, you know, there's this crazy scene where, like, you know, the family almost gets the, the upper hand on them and shoots one of them. And then the main guy says, no, 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 this is wrong. And he looks at the screen and he talks to you and he grabs the remote control and he rewinds the scene. Oh, wow. It's so weird. Anyway, it's such a unique Sounds cool. film. It's deeply disturbing. <laughs> Funny games. Um, okay. The American remake is actually very good. Um, that's the one I've seen two or three times, but that movie is messed up. Funny games. All right, let's see. Um, oh, Carrie. You didn't have Carrie. Uh, you know, I was going to put Carrie. Brian Car Yes, I was going to put Carrie on the list because I've seen the original and I've seen the new one. Sissy Spacek. Um, and I, I just, you know, honestly, Carrie... Oh, yeah, they Apart did a from the with one Glory scene, Grace it's 
Carrie the pig's is not blood. as yeah. It's only the last scene of that movie has anything frightening in it. It's not a jumpy movie. Oh, I actually it's find not it scary. Quite spooky. So we actually watched the remake together in the theatre. I just That's remember right. that now. You we kind did. of talked me into you in. it. Yeah, <laughs> I dragged Tony to see horror movies, and it wasn't bad. But it was I, good. Yeah, but I like the original with Sissy Spacek, which a fun fact you might not know this. That was one of the first acclaimed horror films that swept up Oscar nominations. Yeah. It got a lot of like John prestigious Travolta's in that awards. Film. It's one of John Travolta's first films. Um, I actually, I think it, it's quite good. Huh. Um, you ask any man about periods, oh, um, <laughs> they'll say, yeah, you Carrie knew you man, were going to bring that Carrie. <laughs> first oh. scene of Carrie, bro. Uh, anyway. It's so true. Um, I like Carrie. Um, okay, so the original Carrie we're recommending yeah. then. Okay, Alien. I told you. So Aliens is more of a action movie. Yeah. The first Alien is straight Terrifying. up horror. Yeah. Yeah, straight up Definitely. horror. John I was going to put it on my list. I knew you would. Yeah, that iconic scene with John Hurt yeah. at the dinner table where the alien bursts out of his stomach. Um, anyway, I think that definitely goes on there. Okay. Um, again, this one's kind of thriller, but I put Misery on here with I've Kathy Bates. I've never seen Misery. Are you serious? No. The hobbling scene? Never seen Misery. I'm your biggest fan. And then she hobbles his legs, breaks did you his just, legs. Did you just like ruin no, the movie no, no. for me? No, no, no. It's like a very famous scene. It doesn't okay. ruin it at all. It's basically about this insane super fan of this author. Oh, I'd love to see that. And he gets into a car crash and Kathy Bates is like his biggest fan and she like nurses him to health. But then she gets oh. really psycho and she won't let him go. Uh, she won the Oscar for Best Actress. Kathy I've heard Bates. about it, obviously. Yeah. Another Stephen King uh, book. Right. I mean, obviously, half of these are probably Stephen, oh, yeah. Stephen King. Definitely. <laughs> He's the and master of There's a few of, of those horror. that I actually left off because I didn't like all right. of them. Anyway, uh, Misery is a great film. Uh, let's see. Okay, I had to put this film on here. It's so batshit ludicrous and over the top. Piranha 3D. Did you ever see that? <laughs> Came out I, in like 2010. I saw Piranha, the original, which I actually liked. Oh, not the one the from 3D. the 70s? No, they re- remade the the one from the 70s because there was Piranha and then there was Piranha 3D. Okay, well, I'm talking about the one with Jerry O'Connell, who's like the porn director and they oh, have no. real life porn stars. Damn it, I shouldn't know that, but they do who are actually in the movie. Um, Adam Scott's in it. Okay. Um Doc from Back to the Future is oh. in it. Christopher Lloyd. And it's um, just about piranhas or what? Yeah, but it's so over the top okay. in its um, violence that it's almost, it's funny. Okay. It's just, it's ludicrous. Elizabeth Shue is in it. Okay. Um, I've seen it two or three times. I actually own it. I'll it, watch that. It's very entertaining because it's so over the top. I kind of like those You know, the piranha like rips Jerry O'Connell's cock off and it like spits it out. It's I so have stupid. Seen this. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have. It's yeah. entertaining. It, it really is. It's fun. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, they Live, which is John Carpenter. Um, and that's uh, with Rowdy Piper. It's kind of like a horror sci fi. Okay. Um, where they pull on the sunglasses and everyone's aliens. But oh. uh, it, it's a kind of a, a B cult classic movie. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, American Werewolf in London. Have you not seen that? No. Uh, you know, I have seen that some time ago. Again, um, werewolves and vampire movies, I didn't really, didn't really put on there. No, they don't oh, yeah. scare Twilight me. Twilight movies don't count. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm mean, even t- talking like scarier films like, you know, uh, like you could put Lost Boys on here. That could it's be on my <laughs> list. <laughs> but they it's don't, on my list. They don't frighten me because okay. I love them. I love okay. them. But yes, they, they maggots, could... Michael. <laughs> You're eating maggots. Oh, it was so good. Kiefer Sutherland is amazing. Lost in Boys, that film. by the way, if you have not, yeah, yeah he, the he'll two cover curries, it. Curry Haim, Curry Feldman. So I'm gonna, good. Yeah, I'll jump to that soon. Okay. But American Werewolf in London is great. Yeah, uh, the makeup and the the effects uh, of the the turning into the werewolf still hold up. Yeah. Um, I actually really, it's a John Landis film. Um, that probably doesn't mean anything think to you but no. at the time he was known for animal house which is like a screwball <laughs> comedy and then he did american werewolf in london uh, i i don't know why again i watched it when i was really young so maybe that's why i love it so much i've seen it several times cool it's, it's a classic film um okay let's see what else i have here um oh event horizon i made you guys all watch that yeah that's a messed up that, science know, fiction it horror it didn't movie. super scare me it was God, spooky it scared others, but I, I wasn't really scared Oh, see, yeah. I, Lawrence Fishburne's and that Sam Neill. It was a good movie. Yeah, the it was Prodigy very good. do the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Event Horizon that was, was a, a really film. spooky one, guys. It's like this strange, alienish. Um, well, they discover this thing. abandoned spaceship that's yeah. been missing for like 100 years. And there's a reason. Yeah, and then obviously when the crew go on board, things go It was pretty scary. Crazy, yeah. 
Okay, good. I'll, I'll go through any others I have here. Oh, Frank Knight. Have you ever seen Frank yeah. Knight? Yeah, oh, I was going to... Not that's the another... remake with Colin Farrell. That's the one you've of seen. Of course, that's oh, what I've God. seen. <laughs> Which isn't bad, actually. It was funny. Oh, and God bless him. What's his name's in that? Yeah. Anton Yelchin, who oh, died. Oh, he is in that? I don't yeah, remember that. Yeah, he's the main kid in, in... No, he's not. Yeah, in Frank Knight. Yes, he is. No, oh. it's it's the other guy. No, the guy Anton from... Yelchin. I guarantee you. We can argue about that I on the podcast. No, I swear. Let's argue. <laughs> it's... I remember the main kid being... Okay, I'm going to look it up. Do it. Yeah, it's definitely I Anthony thought it was Elton. what's his name from... Um, I, I, now I'm going to sound really obnoxious to all no. the uh, viewers, but I'm always right about this kind of stuff. Oh my God, you're so into uh, yourself. No, I'm not, but it's definitely Anton Yelchin and Colin Farrell. Um, it's really see. Anton Yelchin? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Came out in 2011. I thought it was the kid from Superbad. Anton Yelchin. <laughs> okay, then... Yeah. What am let's, I that, thinking Let's carry of? on with the podcast. Anyway, go on. But anyway, so the original from the 80s, uh, I've seen several times. It's like a, a fun romp horror comedy okay. uh, about this vampire that moves in next door. And then they remade it with Colin Farrell. And okay. the remake isn't half bad with Anton Yelchin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, you it, are always right, Tony. No, no, just in that case. Um, okay, kidding. let's see. Okay, The Faculty. I can't believe you didn't put that on your oh, list. Oh, come on. The fa- Oh, uh, you know That's what? totally a horror movie. You know what? You're totally right. That is a major omission because I... Josh Hartnett. I love The He's Faculty. Like boyfriend. Elijah Woods I love that. The Faculty. Yeah, it's a great film. It's uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. I really... Uh, Elijah Woods. Look, it's so kind of many corny people. for oh, sure. It's, so corny. it's very 90s, but it's got some jumps and it's yeah. definitely... It's a horror you're right, that's a total omission on my part. I watch that whenever it's on TV. There you go. Okay, good. Another one, which again is almost ridiculous, but for some reason I enjoy it. It's called The Blob. Have you ever seen that? It's got, <laughs> what now? It's got Matt Dillon's brother in it, Kevin Dillon, okay. who played drama in Entourage, the HBO TV show. Okay. So it's a young Kevin Dillon. It's a total B horror movie called The Blob from the 80s. I, I like it. I definitely recommend it. I'm almost done. No, you just reminded um, me of one. Oh, Near Dark. Have you ever seen that? Nope. Okay, that's a vampire movie with um, directed by Catherine Bigelow and uh, with a, a young Bill Paxton. Oh, cool. It's really good. Um, okay, so then I did have The Lost Boys. That's the last on the That's list. It's a here. brilliant movie. Um, you're right. It, I mean, it's not a straight up horror. It's like a horror comedy. Yeah, it's a it vampire film. It does scarier have, one. Does have some legitimately scary scenes in it. Sure. But yes, I remember the film most for um, you know the ridiculous style. Kiefer Sutherland, who was such a great brilliant. antagonist, um, and then it's got the two Corries in it: Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. So good. Um, okay, good. And it's then it's got that song, that haunting song. It's yeah. Um, like at the end of the movie, there's this kind of famous haunting song. Oh, I don't remember it. I can't sing. I'm so going to refrain gonna from it. breaking out into song like I usually do. It's <laughs> okay. brilliant. So one last film I had to mention here since we're talking about horror yeah. films. And I actually watched this. I, you probably haven't. It's called Nosferatu. I know of it okay. very much. It's the original vampire movie. It's about 100 years old. Yeah. Um, this film came out in, I think, the 20s. Yeah. It's a silent film. Um and the the actor is a guy called Max Shrek who okay. plays Dracula. It is so fucking creepy. Really? I watched it on YouTube. You know, well, part of what makes it so creepy is because it's so old. You know, it's like almost 100 years old. Now, there are true stories about this guy that apparently this guy was a real vampire. And the guy who directed the film paid him in blood to act in the movie. There are all these like conspiracies creepy. about this film watch some of it it's so spooky he looks so creepy the makeup or whatever they do like his long pointy fingers and teeth and his he's so deformed um it, it's really spooky yeah so um that's why i'm giving it a mention uh, and um, you should that that's a very famous classic film yeah so, so that's my list I, I had a few other here like um it follows and the witch are two horror films uh that came out in the last year or so yeah. that are quite acclaimed that i wasn't a big fan of it follows we watched together i thought it was okay it was an interesting concept but it wasn't scary it at all some disgusting scenes yeah and in the it. witch was so it was well acted but yeah. it was so boring oh really and then the other one that i've made a note of because i still haven't gotten around to it but it's very acclaimed is the but the babadook which i you saw said you of, saw yeah. some of it and you found it very it boring. was very slow and not at all scary okay like that the, let's just say the first hour 
nothing scary. Really? At okay. all. So, all right. So you don't recommend it. I haven't seen it. The Babadook. Yeah. And some people really liked it. So I'd have to check it out again and fully watch it, obviously, to see if something actually happens. Um, mm-hmm. And having mentioned that, obviously, there's also things like the Blair Witch Project, which I never saw. Doesn't oh, interest me. Oh, I did. Me. I couldn't stand it. I've heard yeah. that type of filming has made people sick and it was just stupid. Yeah. The Blair Witch Project was a huge hit when it came out. I... I thought it yeah. sucked. I was so never, that's why that wasn't on my list. Never a fan. Okay, good. Anything else yeah. you want? That's my list. Anything else you wanted to add on like horror spooky movies? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about them um, uh, to see if there was anything else that I missed, but I think I really covered it really well, What are we going to see well. on the movie night next You're week next, for Halloween? You're because next. Because everyone else hadn't seen it other okay. than me and you, and I wanted to rewatch it, and probably we'll just do Scream. Okay, fine. Um, I or, can watch Screen again. <laughs> or maybe, let. actually having said that, maybe I'll do Let Me In. Yeah, I, it's not really for an audience. Okay. It's like a smart one. Scream is such a crowd pleaser, which is why it's such a great horror movie. It's like everyone will kind of enjoy it. Yeah. You know? And those are, you know, those are the films where I, I have all my aspects and you've got the, the, the comedic aspect, the jumpy aspect and all of that. Yeah, so I mean, that's my kind of takeaway from this is, I mean, this list is quite eclectic. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, your range is a bit broader in terms of horror. It's very broad. For me, the films I really enjoy are just great films on their own right. And they have the, the aspect of horror to it, but they're well acted. They have a great story. Um, and they're just very entertaining to one degree or another. Yeah, but can we agree, while you say generally you're not a horror fan... There are enough movies in the horror genre that you really like. So you can't True. say you don't like horror. I'm not, you can't. It, I'm not a huge fan of it. You know, put it this way, I wouldn't go to see it with you in the theater. You almost like, did the first time I asked oh, you. Well, you were very persistent <laughs> and I still managed to evade it. So. I know. <laughs> but anyway, we'll wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So uh, Halloween is coming uh, around the corner next week. So you've got a big long list here. So, uh, you know, you can set up some uh, fun, like, you know, Halloween horror nights and uh, watch some of the movies on this list. Exactly. Okay? All right, Yanni. Well, thank you so much. And uh, good night. That was terrifying. <laughs> Ooh. Sleep tight. Thank you again for listening to a new episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. Just a reminder to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tony the Movie Guy. Also, you can email us anytime at Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com. And most importantly, please do rate and review our podcast on iTunes. It is extremely helpful and very appreciated. Have a very safe and fun Halloween. See you next time.